Okay, this is going to be part two of the videos on the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first video because it will show you how to use these formulas. And all we're going to do in this video is just three more sample problems similar to the ones that we did in the previous video. So let's take a look at them and see what they look like. Okay, the first problem looks like this. Um, you want to find the derivative of y, but in this case it's actually the sum of two things added together. So you've got a first thing plus a second thing. So really all you do is find the derivative of the first one plus the derivative of the second one. Now we'll still take advantage of this u thing that we used in the last video series. And again, if you haven't done it, I would definitely watch that because we'll use the same process. So first of all, let's look at this first one. You want the derivative of 3 times the inverse sine of 4x. So what we'll do in this case is we'll let u, in this case, u is going to be equal to what's inside the parentheses, so we'll let u be equal to 4x. Now you have to figure out which formula to use, so let's go back and take a look at the formulas. And since we're working with inverse sine, we'll use this one right here. So u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and, again, this is going to be uh, u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. Now, like in the previous videos, we're going to need three things. We'll need u, u prime, and u squared. So u is going to be equal to 4x. So u is what's inside the parentheses. Now, you'll need u prime with a derivative. So u prime will be the derivative of 4x, but the derivative of 4x is just 4. And then finally, you're going to need u squared. So u squared would be take whatever u is and square it. So this is going to be 4x quantity squared. And if you square that, you'll get 16x squared. So there is u, u prime, and u squared. And all you're going to do is plug it into this formula right here. So let's go ahead and we'll take care of this one and put it down here. So at this point, the derivative would be, um, first of all, you've got the constant 3. Then it's going to be times. And you'll find the derivative of the inverse sign using this formula right here. Well, you've got all the parts you need, so just plug in the things that you need here. We'll have a line that goes across here. First of all, you need u prime, and u prime is 4. So we'll put a 4 right there. Then you'll need the square root of, and you need 1 minus u squared. So 1 minus, and u squared is 16x squared. So there's the derivative of the first part. You've got a plus, and now it's just 2 times, so you'll have a 2 right here, and then times the derivative of the inverse cosine. Well, let's go look at that formula, and the derivative of the inverse cosine will be this one over here. It's just the negative of u prime uh, divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So actually, the same as this one, just with a negative in front of it. So we'll go ahead and use that formula. So for this one, it's going to be uh, the negative of u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. And this time, u will be equal to, again, it's 4x. Now, these two don't have to be the same. In this case, it makes the problem a little bit easier because if you've got a 4x here and a 4x here, you can use these same values of u that you used before. So let's just go ahead and do that, and we'll plug those into the formula. So the formula says, and again, we'll put a bar across here, um, it's the negative of u prime, and u prime is 4. Uh, divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared, and u squared is 16x squared. So you've got a 16x squared there. And really, you're done with the problem, but sometimes you can simplify these, and this one we can actually simplify a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, you can make this one be, and we'll just go ahead and put them both over here. Uh, multiply the 4 and the 3 together, and you would get 12 over the square root of 1 minus 16x squared. Then you've got plus, oops, I'm sorry, it would be a minus in this case. So actually, 
uh, when you multiply these two together, you've got 2 times this. So this thing will actually turn out to be a minus here. So uh, 2 times negative 4 would give you a negative 8. So this would be a negative 8 divided by uh, the square root of 1 minus 16x squared. Kind of keep an eye on the negatives. So those you can put together. Now both these happen to have the same denominator, so you can put those together as the square root of 1 minus 16x squared, and then 12 minus 8 will give you a 4, and that's going to wind up being the final derivative. So really, in this problem, it's just a matter of find the derivative of the first thing plus the derivative of the second thing, and use your two rules here you had. Here is the rule for uh, inverse sine. Here is the rule for inverse cosine. Then it's just a matter of finding u, u prime, and u squared. OK, let's take a look at a second example now. OK, now in the second example, this is going to be a problem that involves the product rule. You've got a first thing times a second thing, so you're going to have to use the product rule. So it will be the original first times the derivative of the second plus the original second times the derivative of the first. And you can think of this as being the first thing and this thing right here as being the second thing. So there's the first times the second. Okay, so when we do this, uh, let's just go ahead and we'll start off with the uh, product rule in this case. So when we find the derivative, it'll look like this. Y prime, it's going to be the original first, which is x squared. Then it'll be times the derivative of the second, but this is going to involve uh, the inverse um, trig function rules. So let's go look at these. Now we've got cotangent, so we'll use this rule right here. So the negative of u prime divided by 1 plus u squared. So up here we'll have, uh, it'll be the negative of u prime divided by 1 plus u squared. Now, like in those previous problems, we're going to let this be our u right here. So like we've done before, I'll let u be equal to 5x, and you'll need the derivative of u, so u prime would be equal to 5, and you'll need u squared, so u squared would be equal to 5x quantity squared, which is going to get you to 25x squared. So those are the three things that you'll need as you plug them into this formula. So now it's just a matter of putting them in there. So again, the derivative of v, um, it's the negative of u prime, so you want the negative, and u prime is 5, divided by um, 1 plus u squared, and u squared is 25x squared. So this will be 25 x squared right here. So what that is, that is the original first times the derivative of the second, and you're halfway through the product rule. Then you've got the original second, which is the inverse cotangent of 5x. Then this thing times the derivative of the first, which is just 2x and you would be done. So this would be the original second times the derivative of the first. So there's another problem, and that's an example that uh, required the product rule, and you had one of the inverse trig functions inside the product rule. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. And this last example will involve the chain rule. Now the thing here, you've got an inverse secant function, but it's quantity squared, so you'll have to use the chain rule in this case. So again, what the chain rule is, it's the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. Well, the inner part in this case is going to be this thing right here. So first of all, let's take the derivative of the outer part. So y prime will be equal to, now what we'll do, is actually we'll wind up with two derivatives. We'll find the derivative of this first term plus the derivative of the second term. So for a moment, let's just Forget about this second one for a while and concentrate on this one. And what this says, using the chain rule, the derivative of the outer part would be 2. Then you've got this entire thing to the first power. So the very first thing to do is to bring the 2 down in front and 
there's the derivative of the outer part. And then just like always on the chain rule, you go ahead and rewrite the original inner part. So I'll make this be the inverse secant of 3x times, so what happens, that's the derivative of the outer part times the derivative of what's on the inside. But now when you take the derivative of what's on the inside, now you're going to have to use uh, the inverse secant derivative. So again, we want inverse secant, so let's go back and look at our rules. And what the rule says is this, the inverse secant, it's equal to u prime divided by the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. So we'll put that in our formula, and that means when you find this derivative, um, you're going to use u prime divided by the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. Okay, now what we'll do is the same thing we've done in the past when we find these things. We'll let u be equal to this, what's inside the parentheses. So you'll need u, u prime, and u squared. So u is 3x. u prime would be the derivative of 3x, which is 3. And then finally, you're going to need u squared. So take the 3x and square it, and you would get 9x squared. So to use this formula, here's the three things you need. You need u, you need u prime, and you need this right here. So now it's just a matter of plugging those things into this formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, you need u prime on the top, which is a 3. So we'll put a 3 right here. Then you need the absolute value of u. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the absolute value of u, which would be 3x. So this is going to be the absolute value of 3x. Then finally, you need the square root of uh, u squared, and u squared is 9x squared, so 9x squared, and then you've got a minus 1, so put the minus 1 in there, and you've got it. So all this was, it's the chain rule. So here's the derivative of the outer part, rewrite the original inner part, then times the derivative of the inner part using your inverse uh, trig rules. Now you still got this derivative out here, so finally the derivative of the second one would be plus, and that's just the derivative of this thing using the power rule, which would be 15x squared, and you'd be done. There's, that's going to be the entire answer right there. So really, just to go back through these again, now on this problem, you use the chain rule. On the second problem, um, you use the product rule. You had a first thing times a second thing. And then finally, on the first problem, it was just a matter of the derivative of the first one plus the derivative of the second one. But they all involved uh, these six um, derivatives of the inverse trig functions. So again, just find the one you need, and then inside the problem, find u, u prime, and u squared, and you've got what you need to solve them. So there are three more examples using derivatives of the inverse trig functions.